Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to your Arsenal Advisor. Um, today, uh, this video is going to be uh, about the, uh, the M1A. I have a Springfield M1A. It's a standard model. Um, <clears throat> I just recently put a scope on it and I've been trying to um, prove the accuracy a little bit on it. I, I had had some previous modifications, like I used to have a shim up uh, between the front band and the barrel. Um, I think I had the uh, gas cylinder on probably too tight. Same thing up with the uh, flash suppressor. So I reinstalled those uh, with less less stresses, you know, where they're uh, attached. Um, and then recently, kind of in between uh, like new reloading uh, techniques I've, I've learned about. I've been uh, trying them out on the M1A with the, the, its 308 Winchester. Um, and, you know, I decided to go ahead and get a unitized gas cylinder. So I took, well, I took, took my front band and gas cylinder and sent it out uh, to have it uh, welded together. Uh, so there's two methods that are done. There's the Marine Corps method that I chose where they weld the front band at the uh, six o'clock and the 12 o'clock position um, to the gas cylinder. And then there's another method I think associated with the, with the army, which is they call it glue and screw uh, method where they, um, you know, they, they attach some screws from the, uh, the back of the uh, front band into the gas cylinder. And then they kind of, a uh, fix it or glue it with the uh, like epoxy to um, keep it secure um, but anyway I went with the Marine Corps method um, so you can go ahead and uh, continue on into the video you see um, I have the uh, have the rifle apart and all the different parts involved with it and kind of kind of see some of the stuff I get into that I find out when I'm um, fitting all the parts back together Start uh, going through these sections. So what I have here is, you know, is the uh, uh, barreled action with a scope on it for my uh, M1A. It's a standard, standard model. Uh, so I got the uh, gas cylinder and front band um, unitized. So that's going to go on right here. And I got the front of the barrel where the flash suppressor uh, goes on. Um, just to lay things out, I have the uh, hand guard. Um, I'll put that on. Uh, that'll probably go on first because um, that's uh, prevented from coming on and off basically by the um, gas cylinder. Uh, so we have the uh, castle nut, the pliers, that'll be for use with the castle nut and the um, flash suppressor. Um, we have a combination tool, it's using the GI cleaning kits. We have a, um, like a Sadlac um, gas cylinder wrench. Um, so right here we have the, uh, the unitized gas cylinder. See this part is the um, front band, and normally on an M1A or the early, you know the M14s, they um, they're just loose. They go, they fit in, in front of the, um, the the shoulder of the barrel. Then the um, gas cylinder slides on with a gas cylinder lock and. Yeah, yeah, a gas cylinder plug screws in, kind of holds that all in place. Yeah, I don't know if you can see right here, we have the splines. Um, and then over the years, people um, just decided that that was a point of, um, or a cause of uh, inaccuracies in, in the, um, I guess, in the uh, rifle. So people found a way that they stabilize by, or unitize the, the um, Unitize the uh, front band to the gas cylinder. Uh, the stock would fit into the bottom here, um, and they would curl these um, kind of the top part. They curl those ends of uh, the top of the front band around to kind of keep the hand guard from moving around and, and hitting the the wood stock below. But um, so anyway, so I went ahead and, and got my um, my factory. Uh, gas cylinder and front band unitized and it was done uh, the United States Marine Corps way by welding at the uh, six o'clock and the 12 o'clock uh, positions um, 
there's another method uh, people call glue and screw where they, they screw, screw it in and then they, they I think they epoxy. Um, all right, so I think I've uh, called out uh, just about everything. I don't really show the gas, gas lock or gas cylinder lock ring. Okay, so the first uh, first thing I'm going to do is put the um, handguard back on. This handguard clip it fits into these uh, little slots on um, both sides of the uh, the barrel. Um, I'm going to just put some grease on the end of them and slide it on. I don't have. I think there's some tools that help with that. Um, I don't have that particular tool, um, but it can just slide on easily enough. Right, so put some uh, grease up on the uh, front of the gas cylinder near the splines. So I want to slide it onto the um, barrel, or maybe try to prevent some scratching, prevent some, make it easier to take off at some point later. So, slide it over the barrel, in front of the barrel here. And the threads, there's some threads here for the uh, gas cylinder lock. gently with my um, little hammer. Remember it being this tight when it came off. It's okay. It's just Make sure those hand guards are go in when it gets near. Hand guard caught it. So right now I'm going to pull the bolt to the rear, so I have a scope on this. Okay. Put it back where we had it. Tap it back forward a little bit. So one thing I didn't didn't check yet is with the front of the hand guards if they um they fit into the uh the gas cylinder or the end of the front band that's on the gas cylinder now. Okay, so here's um, something to learn. So you can see the um, his ears bent up. I was pointing them out earlier. I right, see these ears. Um, 
here and uh, it's right here. Uh, the front of the handguard's got to fit in there. And I guess when they bend the tabs back up, they don't fit. So, so I have to like adjust the front of these, cut them down, dremel them out a little bit until it fits the profile on here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take some of that blue tape, I'm gonna uh, take a piece and fit it on the inside of the, um, this area of the uh, front band, and then, um, you know, a piece that's gonna fit, and then I'm gonna take it out, and I'm gonna know where the center is and mark that, and I'm gonna lay it on top of this, on the center, and then, kind of drape it down on either side and see see if the ends of the uh, handguard are longer and then I'm gonna trim those back I don't know if I want to just cut them straight off or I'll just see where the end is and then you know try to maybe uh, use a dremel and try to sand it down maybe nicely so it's not an abrupt uh, cut Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled program. All right, so, I took off, I don't know if you can really tell relative to the other part of the video, um, I took off, this, this ends here so that this depth would not be, would be less, would be more shallow, um, so that it could fit fit into the end of the um, uh, front band on the uh, gas cylinder. Um, I look down the end, try to see if the um, part of the um, handguard was equally down below the ends of the um, front band. Um, I try to relieve it a little bit so it'd be super tight because um, so I'll see, I'll take a look after it all goes together and then see because I don't want it to be fixed to the to the rear and have it lean towards one side or the other and have it be all uneven because then I have to relieve one side more than the other again so that it doesn't touch the wood stock. So I'm just trying to preserve, you know, the straight edge here and aim it squarely um, with respect to the gas cylinder. I want, to, I want to slide this thing back on. I think maybe this time I'll try sliding it on because that's kind of how it came off. So that's on now. So right now I'm trying to find the splines so they fit over the uh, Cruise. and there it is now it's on so now I'm going to return to the the light tapping it up to the end of the handguard so that you go in the front band and not get locked on the outside of it or up against it where it won't move.
Okay, I think I've contacted the uh, handguard, so I'll help it out a little bit. Okay, advance it some more. side and make sure it's uh it's going in Gotta see the hand guards fitting in there now sides Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and tap the um, the uh, gas cylinder all the way up until um, it's contacting the uh, barrel shoulder. Now it may or may not, that's why they had shims because they didn't always, wouldn't necessarily contact it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the um, lock ring on. Alright, it's pretty close up there now. A very bright light above me, but then the trick is to get, get that light to not cast a huge shadow on whatever I'm looking at um, or showing. Um, so while I'm holding it in my hand, um, I'm going to tap it a little more. And, and, and that's enough. Um, What happens next is I have to go ahead and, and put the uh, lock ring on and I used to have this with the shim I used to have all these parts on real tight and I think too tight is probably not good um, so I took out the shims I think I reduced it down to like a thinner shim just to try to keep things a little snug but it's still not like unitized or had that same kind of feel that this will now um, so you can see some of the, maybe some of the uh, marks where the front of the gas cylinder was, you know, getting pushed up against the, uh, the, the lock ring when it was tightening it down. Uh, and then a uh, nice uniform uh, wear mark on the front where the uh, gas cylinder plug screws in. So I'm going to put some of that uh, grease on the threads. Just a little bit for that anti-seize property. I'm going to face the original side that faced the gas cylinder back where it was. And I'm going to um, screw it on. See how far it goes. Now, perfect world, it would be um, it's it's snug down at the, uh, the five thirty or or, or uh, the six o'clock position. Sometimes it goes past or not far enough. So what you would do is you would um, you could back it off and you could tap the uh, gas cylinder back forward. Um, so I don't have to do that because it timed, I mean, I'm, it's just before the six o'clock position and I just, I just pushed it down with my finger. Um, 
Uh, so that's great. I'm going to tap this forward just so that I feel like it's it's that much more snug. Because um, what happens? Um, sorry to say um too much. I notice I'm doing that. Uh, I'll put some uh, threads or um, grease on the threads here a little bit. Like I was saying before, the gas cylinder. Oh, and let's not forget the piston. Um, inside the gas cylinder, um, the piston inside the gas cylinder, inside here, it's all supposed to run dry. Um, so I'm gonna put the, uh, oops, I'm gonna put the um, piston back in. There's a flat spot, flat spot faces up. You can see that on the back of the, uh, Gas cylinder. I'm feeling I got grease on my fingers, so I'm gonna re wipe that off. Got all these parts mostly prepared uh, before shooting video. Um, Alright, slide that in. Flat side up. Pick it up a little bit. Going perfectly flat. Okay. You can see it sliding out. Um, okay. All right, so. the uh, gas plug in, Actually, take some of the grease off, I don't want to jam any extra grease into the gas cylinder. I'm trying to be careful not to cross thread, take it out. It's not, I'm, I'm feeling some, a um, little bit of resistance. I don't know why it's not going in. I wanted to uh, take a look at that. Okay, so um, I just took the uh, the wrench here and, and uh, adjusted, made sure the unlock uh, ring, you know, was centering on the front of the, uh, gas cylinder here and then it's turning now um hand tight still feels a little grainy so <laughs> hoping it didn't didn't do any cross threading um so so now i'm gonna snug it with the um the uh combination tool this one uh, that little forward of the uh, the rest there. Okay. Um, see how I can do this. So right now I'm going to take the um, gas cylinder wrench, protect it with that blue tape. Um, this came back, uh, I think, reparked. And this tool, you know, it takes some of the parkerizing off, you know. Um, so, I'll try to preserve it a little bit better this time. So, so um, it's got a little bit of opposing force. It's just even tightening that down um, makes me want to put, <laughs> put some grease in there. As I um, 
tighten up to the front of the gas cylinder. An idea, I think, with these, um, you run them dry, unless you're in a moist environment, you're not supposed to pick up a lot of moisture. I don't think you're supposed to take this apart in the field uh, that much if you're actually using this in a military uh, setting. Um, and now, if you're in a training setting, you probably have to clean them up uh, quite regularly. You probably have to take that off. But I'm going to just put it in there kind of hand tight. Um, there might be a torque value. I don't, I don't know what it is. Doing it hand tight, I've been able to take it on and off and it doesn't loosen while firing um, that I found. Um, all right, so things are looking pretty good. I'm going to reposition the... Uh, rifle and the rest here all right so the next next part uh, to finish this off we have the um glass suppressor and castle nut um so the castle nut these little teeth or indentations are for the um there's a set screw on the front or just underneath the uh, front sight post um you, you screw that in and then that will engage one of these um one of these notches in the castle castle nut um, so just a little bit with the grease again there's some anti seize actually that's um, that goes in the uh, castle nut because the castle nut's gonna be the one that's um, engaging these threads and it'll pull the flash of pressure towards the barrel. So what you have to do is you have to put the, um, support my elbow here, castle nut, uh, the notches face, face forward. And you kind of slide that inside the um, flash, flash of pressure, good catch. Um, just kind of hold that on, there's splines and let go of the, the the machine slots you slide that forward um, you gotta kind of get get it started get the threads of the uh, castle nut started and then gradually slide the uh, flash oppressor um, back and you have to keep the um I can't really see it you have to keep the um, castle nut moving moving back so make sure I don't have the um Gently tap, just make sure it's all the way on. Okay, I'm gonna screw the um, castle nut down, I guess, snug with my hand. Um, do have the castle nut pliers. Um, these claws uh, engage with those notches in the castle nut, you can tighten it. So, what I have to do now is advance this uh, set screw, I think it's a 1 16th, in, see if it's in one of those notches, and it's and it's not. Um, so I have to take the uh, castle nut, castle nut pliers, Get them engaged on some opposing opposing notches, and then uh, make sure it's secure. And then just turn it a little bit until I can see that the set screw is going in.
Now recently I had stoned, let me make a castle nut, stoned the end of the castle nut so that it would, um, it would time on one of these notches without, um, without using a huge amount of force. Because it's another thing I think I had had it too tight. It came with that castle nut, and when I took off the flash suppressor, put it on. It's a different flash suppressor. I was thinking it would just go back on the way that it uh, came off. And, you know, all the different parts are slightly different dimensions, so it's not a surprise. So I probably put it on too tight. So when I was taking the uh, shim off of this, I wanted to take some of the tension off of that. So I had. Um, done the same same thing basically just try to make this shorter and now um, but this time I thought it would go back on because it's the same flash suppressor the same um, castle nut and everything's the same but it looks like I'm trying to get it to, to go to like one, one more notch and it's tough to see up in here um, how far things are advancing. And I can tap it a little more. I know this is getting a little bit farther away from the uh, video, uh, video camera. All right, so I found the notch. It's a nice little tone, it's like a tuning fork. Now I don't know if I'm going to do this, but I guess I, I moved it on. I got the uh, set screw in there. I don't know if I need to loosen it to kind of snug into the set screw. Um, it was interesting. The, um, 116th it, it like it turns the set screw but then when I got it tight it kind of started it seemed like it was skipping through it's just it's a, it's a tiny set screw uh, so handle with care um, so that's that's it putting the unitized gas cylinder on um, put the flash suppressor and uh, back on the end of it, end of the barrel. I'm going to go get the stock. Okay, um, one thing to mention before I put the stock on is the, um, is the bottom of the front band. Um, should put a little bit of grease um, in there so that it helps guard against um, tensions when um, doing a recoil for the, um, is the band on the stock here. I'm not sure what the proper term for that is rubs, it moves, the grease helps it go back into the same spot each time after recoil. And with the unitized gas cylinder, or with the gas cylinder having the front band unitized to it, this can go back and forth into the same spot more consistently, such as in rapid fire or just general shot to shot. Um, with the front band loose, with shims and things that didn't, it would be less consistent in, in that respect. 
can see if it goes back on. So you stick the um, front of the stock up there, and the action should the action rotates back into the stock. So this is where the, um, the action is basically going to be. So you can see there's a, I guess a gap between the wood stock and the um, handguard. If it's easy to see, that's, that's what we want. It doesn't have to be deep, it just has to stay, stay apart. This one, kind of hard to see, but it's, it's looking a little close. So I may have to um, may have to sand that some more. All right, so looking at it again, um, like I can press down, and have the handguard um, touch. It's, it's kind of flimsy. It's probably not going to be a problem, but after going through this whole process, I'm going to go ahead and try to make some more clearance. Uh, so basically what we we'll do is, while the uh, action's in the, in the uh, stock, um, have the trigger, trigger assembly um, and put that back in. Uh, this, this rifle, like the Grand, it, the, the trigger uh, group attaches to the, um, the action and kind of squeezes the, the stock in between. Um, and there's only one one spline on one side that kind of fits straight up into it. It's, it's kind of hard to put it in, so I don't want to keep doing that too much unnecessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and um, work on the um, handguard. I mean, this is something I don't have to take the handguard back off to do. All right, so I went ahead and used the Dremel and took some more uh, material off the um, bottom of the um, handguard here. See some clearance there with the card. Let's bring it up on the other side. Actually, it's deeper. I took more off on this uh, left side than I did on the right, but. I can push down more on, on the left side than I can on this side, so I think it's pretty stable, probably good enough for now. Um, I do recommend taking the handguard off, taking that off when you do that, because got dust all over the place. Had to go suck all the dust out of the vacuum and clean it back up. So just a little word about that. <clears throat> See if I can put this back in. <clears throat> so I try to aim the back of the trigger guard into the back of the, uh, the cutout the trigger control group in the in the stock try to line up that uh that one spline i was talking about and it's i find it really hard to to um not wiggle back and forth with this uh, trigger group to try to find find the uh the spot safe on. I don't know if that was, wasn't on before.
just says in. All right, so when you get the uh, trigger group all the way in, you just pull the uh, trigger guard down. It sort of clamps into, you know, parts on the uh, barreled action there, and just you can uh, press it in with your hand. Try not to pinch yourself between the uh, safety lever and uh, trigger guard. Um, it's uncomfortable if you do get it jammed in there because this is some. The steel is flexible. That's how it reaches this little, uh, there's a little um, notch that a tab on the back of the trigger guard fits into and you have to press the, the, the metal there to get it to flex into it and now it's uh, nice and tight. Bring it back together. Um, so you can kind of see the uh, that little area that was welded here, the area that was welded up, up at the top and had to go ahead and you know put the flash suppressor back on so now it's uh ready for action um probably need to uh clean it again okay there you have it it's um not a very not a very complicated process. Um, you just have to un you, know, you saw just unscrew the castle nut, take the flash presser off. Um, don't forget about the set screw. Uh, you gotta undo that before you take the castle nut off, and then unscrew the gas plug, lock ring, um, gas cylinder will come out. So uh, the one thing that uh, I didn't notice until I started uh, trying to put it back on was that the um, when they bend up the tabs. That are on the end of the uh, top of the front band, um, the front of the handguard, um, it's not going to fit in there like it used to. Um, so I had to uh, cut out a little bit of the, the end here, uh, make sure it fit. And then I had to go back and check the fit of the handguard along the wood stock because you're supposed to have some uh, a space here because I guess the, um, the handguard can sometimes touch the wood would stock and you know make the um the stock you know operate differently shot to shot um based on you know what's going on with the handguard and wood stock because um the, the the motion from the piston you know forcing the operating rod back um wants to lift the barrel up and the bottom of the stock fits underneath this um the front band so there's a thing called draw pressure. You're supposed to have just enough draw pressure to kind of keep the whole rifle as a whole, like a stabilized when it's resisting those forces with the gas piston, you know, when a gas piston is uh, in action during uh, the cycling. Um, but having said all that, and I didn't go into that in, in detail, of course, um, the unitizing on the front band to the gas cylinder allows the wood or the stock to, it should go back to the same spot a little more consistently, um, like if there's any motion between the stock and the front band. Uh, and then there's one piece that gets, um, I guess, attached to the lock ring, or honestly, it's not really attached to the lock ring, but the gas plug is tightened um, with the lock ring that's threaded onto the barrel above, and, and then when it's tightened down, it's very secure. And then that as a unit makes the, uh, the stock lock up much more consistent and that's supposed to help with the uh, the accuracy now i just have a standard model um standard weight barrel um i don't have a bedded action uh, i now have a unitized gas cylinder that's supposed to add to uh, accuracy um i'm probably going to put on the uh the recoil spring guide i have one i took it off uh, a while ago but i'm going to put that back in there and I think that's just about all I can do for accuracy, short of bedding and getting heavier barrels. Um, maybe more work to the trigger. Um, I think it comes standard with a two-stage trigger. But as with anything, there's always things that, that can be tweaked. I'm pretty happy with the trigger. The only problem I find, because I'm kind of delving into another topic, is the... Um, 
like if I use this rifle in a in a rest, um, sometimes I don't pull the trigger positively, and then I can double around because the recoil can kind of bump into the trigger or the trigger finger, you know, if you're not careful. So you have to really do follow through. And I normally only have that problem when I'm using some kind of um, mechanical type rest. Uh, but anyway, um, this was just really intended not to be that, that long of a video. I thought all these parts would go back together pretty, pretty quickly, kind of. Uh, so I learned, learned a little bit there with respect to that handguard, fitting that into the um, front band. And, uh, but anyway, uh, Everything worked out pretty good. Uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, I uh, don't want to try to reach me through the con the comments section. Uh, you know, they can be missed. I have an email in the end pane after this this section is the, the end pane to the video. Um, so please consider subscribing. Um, you know, and uh, thanks for watching.